Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents, here to share with you an analogy that God gave me. He gave me this years ago, and I felt led to use this when I sang this morning at church. So I feel like I'm going to share it right now. And it deals with life beating you down. And this is the scenario that actually took place. Listen to this. One day, I was having my pavers laid in my garage, on my driveway, not in my garage, but in front of my garage down to the street and in front of my house. Now, these were done with, with terracotta bricks. And do you know, the beautiful thing was watching the process. Now, the star of this scenario is the compactor. The compactor is ugly, heavy, noisy, and bothersome. But the compactor is the key element of this whole process. And here's why. You can liken the compactor to life's problems, the weight of the world beating you down, people that are against you or coming against you, or you can liken it to the devil attacking you. All right, check this out. Well, one day, as the guys were preparing the ground for this beautiful driveway of mine, the first thing they had to do was break up the fallow ground. They had to bang and beat and chop up all this old cement and get it up, get it out, get it out of the way. Now, all this left was loose soil. Now, if someone were to try to drive a car over that, a truck or whatever, they might have sunken down a lot deeper and not been able to move. So we had to prepare the soil to handle the weight. And what did they do? First, they leveled everything off, brought added soil. Then they brought that old ugly compactor. <laughs> and that compactor got to beaten and beaten and pounded and beaten. Now, I'm trying to imitate how that compactor sounded. But let me tell you, it is far from the way I'm going to make it sound. Multiply or speed up my vocalisms about 50 times and you'll hear what it really sounds like. But it's like, bam, 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 bam. And it's like, brrr, it's real fast. Well, it's a real annoying sound. And it's an annoying sensation if you have to push that bad boy. And what the guys had to do was compact the soil. Now, the reason for compacting the soil was so that we could park cars. That's what the driveway is for. But the driveway is useless if you can't prepare it to carry weight. So what they had to do is pack more and more soil and level it off and compact it and level it off and mist it with the compactor with the water and soften it up some more and go back over it and level it and level it and compact it and beat on it and beat on it and beat on it and beat on that poor dirt. I know that dirt was probably looking up like, uh, will you leave me the heck alone? <laughs> but anyway, so this was a real tedious ordeal. And this was the comical part. After all that, you know they had to go back over it and do it again? And then after all that, they had to do it again. So what you end up with is a constant barrage of beating and beating and beating and beating. And it just seems like life beats you down and you cannot figure out, well, what the heck is going on, right? So what happens? What happens is you end up with the pavers. 
Now the guys come around, they bring the pavers in, right? And when they bring the pavers in, this is the beautiful part. They start laying out the perimeter. And the perimeter just looks beautiful. I mean, they're laying out the cement and they're lining everything up so that it's lined up perfectly and everything's leveled off and sloping perfectly with the alignment of the driveway. And after they get it in, we have to wait a whole day. Why? Because now the cement has to set. I know you wonder, why is she going into such detail? Because sometimes life, after we get the beat down, then we're left in limbo. And we're like, okay, I don't see an answer. So what's going on? Am I getting ready to get a let up? Is this going to stop? Don't we? Those trials, the barrage of trials, just seem sometimes to come to a complete standstill. And we are in limbo with nothing but questions, no answers, just questions. One of those questions is, where the heck is God in all this? Because you know what? While the cement was setting, the men were nowhere to be found. They weren't sitting there watching it set. They were off doing other things with their day, possibly making money elsewhere. But guess what? Let me take these off. What ends up happening is the cement has to cure. The cement has to harden. And there are things that God imparts to you. While life is beating, God is imparting. And he has to sit back and let that set in you and cure. And a lot of what's curing in you is your character the growth element, the power of the Holy Spirit, a deeper understanding. It, it gets deep. Okay, so now the men are gone, nowhere to be found, just like you feel God is oftentimes when you're going through. No more noise. The compactor is put away. Nothing's happening. And now we're waiting for the cement to cure. But the rest of the pavers aren't laid yet. The job is not finished. So now what happens? When the cement is cured, the men come back. And guess what they do next? They compact it one more time. And they pull out that old ugly, noisy machine and get to beating and pounding. Well, now they're satisfied with how solid the soil feels. And up comes some more pavers. And now they start to link them together. They're linking them, putting them in place, working them. In, no, first, excuse me. First, they lay the sand. And then they lay the gravel and the sand and everything. Now, I don't know this by heart, so I'm going by memory. So if I'm out of sync, y'all forgive me. You're talking about an amateur. Now, they're laying the sand and they're getting everything all situated. Now they come back and they start laying the pavers. They've already put the poles up with the strings and all the measurements. I don't get that. I'm not going there. But now they're laying the pavers. Now it's getting pretty. I'm getting all excited because instead of an ugly beat up driveway, my driveway is beginning to look beautiful. And my desires are about to be fulfilled. Isn't that beautiful? Well, this is what ends up happening. Check this out. They get every single thing laid. Every single paver is laid. And it's laid beautifully. And it's taken them a few days to get everything in place because I have a long driveway and a big front yard. But guess what happens? 
I'm looking at it, getting my camera out. Click, 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 click. Oh, come look at my driveway. And they say, oh, you can't walk on it. I can't walk on it. Why not? We have one more step. And I said, oh, okay, what's that? So after they do a little holes and then some sweeping or whatever, they come back with the compact, that old ugly machine. And they're beaten again. I mean, if I could, I wish I could just imitate the sound. It's annoying. It's loud. It's aggravating. And I know those pavers were tired of being beat on. But guess what? They had to be. And once the beating process was over with, we had a solid foundation with a solid driveway and a solid pathway. I had a big old town car. And I parked that baby on that driveway. Nothing sunk. Nothing shifted. It would rain sometimes for days. And I still had to park my town car. Nothing shifted. Nothing sunk. Everything was in place. The soil never collapsed under the weight because it was well equipped and well prepared. And guess what? God does that with us. He does it with you. He does it with me. When trials come, they start smaller because we're immature. We're younger. But as they come, we're getting stronger and stronger. And when it seems like God is nowhere around, he knows. And he knows how long it takes you to cure. Then he comes back with the pounder again. But it doesn't, it's not that he's trying to be cruel. Life happens because we live in a fallen world. Life happens. And when life gets through happening, God has to come and handle things and handle us. But no matter what happens, every single time, we get stronger, stronger, and stronger, and we're more fortified, and we're able to handle things that we couldn't touch with a 10-foot pole five, six years ago because God used life. Just like the, the paver, the paver men, they used that compactor to work that soil and work those pavers. They used that annoying thing. God uses the attacks of life, the setbacks of life, the, the, the beatings of life. He uses it in our favor. So when life gets through happening in this area, that area, and more responsibility gets put on us, so more things start to come at us, we're able to stand steady and strong. We're not shifted. We're not knocked off balance. We don't collapse. We don't crumble under the under the, the weight of what's going on, we stand strong because we're standing on a sure foundation. And the sure foundation, believe it or not, is not the pavers, is not the soil. It's Jesus Christ and him crucified. Remember that. God bless you. Be encouraged. When things start coming at you, when things are, are going topsy-turvy and helter-skelter and you can't figure out what the heck to do with all this, and you think you're about to crumble under the weight, you think you're about to fall apart, God is, has been preparing you down through the years. He knows what you can handle. He will not put any more on you than you can bear. He's not going to overload you. So you never have to worry about falling apart. God bless you. Amen. And you be encouraged. That's an order.